don't know much about all the breeds of livestock guardian dogs, but I do know a lot about Great Pyrenees. Houston is a Great Pyrenees. Now, not every dog can be a livestock guardian dog. Um, only certain breeds qualify because they've been bred to guard livestock. But there's a thing about livestock guardian dogs, especially Great Pyrenees, that can be so aggravating. Now, a properly trained livestock guardian dog is worth its weight in gold. They can be around the livestock. The livestock can jump on them, can do whatever they want, and the dogs will just ignore it. And the, but the dogs will also give their life to these, whatever their livestock is, whatever they're guarding, whether it's a human child or goats or something else. Um, livestock guardian dogs are just... They actually save lives because you don't have to kill off all the predators. The livestock guardian dogs will keep the predators away. By, and with Great Pyrenees, their first line of defense is barking, which makes them not the greatest city pet because they bark a lot. And so that bugs people. You know, if you've got really close neighbors, that can be an issue. But another problem with Great Pyrenees, and I don't know if it's the same with all the breeds of livestock guardian dogs, and not all Great Pyrenees are as bad as Houston, but Houston is horrible. And that is escaping. You know, if you give these dogs an acre, they think their surrounding 10 acres is theirs to patrol. You give them take 10 acres, and they think the 100 acres surrounding their property is for them to patrol. You give them 100, and they think 1,000. And they, they want to patrol. They want to get out. There's something about this breed that just wants to get out and roam. Well, yesterday I came out here with Prairie. Let Prairie out. And I came with a wagon, and I decided, because I was going to be right here picking up rocks, I, there was a whole bunch of rocks right here, and I picked them all up, put them in my little garden cart, and hauled them away. So I let Houston off the tether, because he, I, I was right here. Where could he go? I was right here. Well, I'm keeping an eye on him, looking up ever so often, and all of a sudden, I see Prairie, but I don't see Houston. So I walked all along the perimeter of the fence. No escape route. There was no digging anywhere, but there was clearly no dog. I mean, it was no doubt in my mind, Houston had gotten out somehow, and I was just baffled. I'm thinking, did he, I know he can climb over the, the four foot fence here. I've, I mean, the gate. I've seen him climb over the gate, which is why we have wire welded to the other gate that's to block dogs from climbing over Sarah will do that and so all the outside gates have to be wired um, saw this on a, another what was a um, rescue their property their fences all had the wire um, cattle hog panels welded to the fence to raise the level of the gate or welded to the gate but I was starting to wonder if maybe he climbed over the fence because I just could not find an escape route. And I was right here. I mean, I was right where I'm, right here. I was sitting on that rock, which he has since moved. It was over here. And picking up all the rocks around me. Well, when I came over here, I discovered, Houston, I, I know you want to get petted, but I am trying to do something, okay? Um... I noticed this rock was over here, um, and there was a teeny bit of digging. I mean, we're only talking a few inches, and I was like, really? Well, I this rock had been over there, so I picked it up and moved it. Moved this rock closer, added that rock, you know, trying to block the hole, and... Because that was the only thing I saw. I, I couldn't see anything else. I mean, absolutely no other way this dog could have gotten out. But even that was like, you know, how could he fit under there? It was, I swear these dogs turn into jello. 
And I came in here and I looked around. Didn't see any evidence. I didn't see any fur on any of these pallets. But the only way I can think that Houston got out was that he climbed up the pallets and went through these holes. Now over here, there's fencing. This is protected. But right here, it ends and then these are all open. And I'm thinking he just climbs right up over the pallets and through those holes. Those holes are plenty big. If this dog can squeeze through that teeny little hole there, he can get through there. So, and I know for a fact he got out. I, after filling up the wagon, I took Prairie and we walked down the driveway to an area where I dumped all the rocks and when coming back, Houston came up to greet us. And I was able to grab Houston's collar and bring him back. And I put him back on the tether. So he can't escape again. But that tells me, I mean, there was proof he got out. And that's the only way I can think that he got out. Now I do have scraps of fencing around. Um, definitely the scraps aren't big enough to cover that big of an area, but they can cover little bits of it. So I'm going to get some of that scrap and I'm going to do what I can to just cover this whole area so that he cannot get out at this location. So if you are thinking of getting a livestock guardian dog, yes, go ahead and do it. But first, check your, I mean, do your research. How many acres do you need to patrol? What do you need the dog to do? Um, what breed? You know, there are some breeds that don't bark as much, but they're more aggressive. And if you have a lot of neighbors, and maybe those neighbors have children or something, and you only have two, three, four, five acres, that may be a horrible decision because the dog may bite. There are certain breeds of livestock guardian dogs that are more likely to be aggressive, more likely to bite. Um, Pyrenees, well, they will attack, but less like, depending on how they're trained, they're safer around human beings. And what was that about? I don't know. I don't see anything. Oh, you just want to be petted. Um, like... My dogs are used to being around people, and they only a couple human beings have they ever been aggressive towards, growling towards. And in every case, there was a reason. I found out something about that individual um, that screamed, yeah, my dogs knew. They understood. Um, whereas there are other breeds that you, they're just not friendly. Pyrenees tend to be more friendly. Um, if you are in need of a dog that um, can be in the house and out with your livestock, be around children and with the livestock, yeah, a great Pyrenees could be your answer. But before you get a livestock guardian dog, you've got to secure that place. you got to make sure they cannot dig out because they will dig. Pyrenees dig. A lot of livestock guardian dog breeds dig, but Pyrenees are horrible about digging. I... I'm no expert on the other breeds, but I can tell you right now, Pyrenees are horrible about digging. They are diggers. They will dig. So you got to make sure that fence cannot be dug un under. They will climb over fences. I don't know about a five-foot fence. Mine don't climb over the five-foot fence, but four feet are no problem. They will climb over a four-foot fence like it's not even there. Um... So you got to keep that in mind. A lot of people do electric fencing. I have issues about electric fencing um, because of all these rocks and stuff. Um, but that may be something. You may want to install electric fencing around your paddocks to keep the dog in. So if you're looking at getting a livestock guardian dog, do your research. Know which breed you want 
to have on your property. Educate yourself and get your infrastructure set up before you get the dog. Because it can be a nightmare of dogs escaping all the time if you don't. Um, so I just wanted to share that with you. Oh my goodness gracious.